A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. discovered in the western United States, men of every type and from every part of the country joined the rush. Most of them were honest, industrious, and law-abiding, but inevitably criminals were attracted by the promise of easy wealth, and it was not until the masked rider of the plains started his great fight for justice that the gold country became safe for honest men and women. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver, the Lone Ranger... Rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for the hills! Santa's waiting for us! Hail, Silver! Hawaii! It was late at night. The moon had gone down behind the distant peaks, and the town of Prospect was shrouded in darkness. A stealthy figure, bandana drawn over his face, fumbled at the door of Ma Harvey's small cottage. Just a little more now. Get a hold on that latch, and I'll have it. This'll do, I think. <clears throat> Hope it didn't wake the old woman. I don't hear nothing. Now for the door. <clears throat> Doggone door. Worse than a door in a barn. Can't see very good. Gotta get across the floor without bumping into nothing. She's sleeping. Dust should be in that dresser over there. If she wakes up. It was the top drawer she put it in? Yeah, doggone it. Does everything in here have to make a noise? And the gold dust. Here it is. Now to get out of here. Oh, oh, I heard it. Who's that? Who is it? There's someone. Oh. Oh, quiet. Don't move. I'm getting out of here. Don't yell and it won't get hurt. Help! Help! I've been robbed! I've been robbed! The following morning, Bart Salem's general store was visited by a cheerful young stranger. He spent freely, and although the store was crowded, Bart waited on him himself. Uh, well, let's see. What else should you ought to have? There's some new Stetsons. Any one of them would do you fine. It ain't for myself I'm buying. Oh. But them them stockings there, them fancy ones with the clocks and everything. How many of them you got to stock? Uh, just two dozen pairs. Wrap, wrap them up, I'll take them. Huh? The whole two dozen? Yep, they, they'll do just fine for my sister to home. <laughs> Maybe Maud like to wear a pair if Pa didn't catch her at it. <laughs> well, they'd look fine on anyone, young fella. 
You must have done right well for yourself. Been prospecting up in the hills? You sure have. And I don't mind telling you my luck was in. Made a right good strike. Now I'll be heading home for the first time in two years. Always did tell the folks I wouldn't be back without cash to rattle in my pockets. Yeah, glad to hear it, friend. Glad to hear it. Yeah, thank you. Gosh, won't they be pleased, though, to see me come busting in the front door with all these presents loaded me down, huh? It'll be just like Christmas coming in the middle of summer. Yeah, they should like it fine. Yeah, won't they? I'd like some supplies. Well, can't you see him busy with the customer, stranger? I'm sorry. I thought he was through. I am almost, mister. Ain't much left for me to buy. Uh, how about some nice gingham aprons for that sister of yours, Mr. Mr. Now, what did you say your name was? Well, I didn't say, but it's Thornton, Buck Thornton. My home's over in Wabash County. Well, is that's where my folks live. Wabash County? Well, they're just neighboring to us. Now, what was it I heard about your county just recent? Did it have anything to do with Whitey Conklin? That's it, Whitey Conklin, the thieving crook. He comes from Wabash County, don't he? Oh, you, you can't judge us all by the likes of him. Oh, now, I didn't mean nothing like that. The sheriff hasn't any idea where Whitey is, has he? <laughs> don't know as he has, but he'd sure like to. <laughs> Ever hear about our sheriff, Sheriff Pearson, and the sheriff from Wabash County, Sheriff Stevens? Some kind of a feud between them, isn't there? <laughs> feud? Stranger, that's putting it mild. Well, both of them are two of the finest lawmen in the state, and each one of them's doing his best to get something on crooks from each other's county. <laughs> they figured it'd make their own county look better. Doggone digits. <laughs> I think both of them would like to get their hands on Whitey. Uh, ain't no doubt of that. Well, I can't think of nothing else I need to buy. How much do I owe you? Hmm, I've been adding it up while we was going along. The uh, stockings, fancy chocolates, that canned stuff... Uh, a uh, bolt of cloth. Well, then, with the other things, comes to $63 all told. Can I pay you in dust? Sure thing. Hand me that poke, and I'll weigh it out on these scales right here. Sure. You carry a lot of dust with you. Mm-hmm. There's plenty more where that came from. And I got at least $2,000 worth in this poke. I judged it was about that. Gosh, Buck, you better be careful carrying so much. Let a fellow like Whitey know about it, and he'd try to get it off in you sure as shooting. <laughs> oh, I ain't afeard. Uh, here's your poke. We're all square. Oh, that's fine. What did you say your name was again? I know a number of people in Wabash County. Well, it's Jim Thornton for real, but I always answers to the name of Buck. I see. Don't know that I heard your handle, did I? Can you wait on me now, storekeeper? Uh, Buck just asked you your handle. I'll eat some flour and bacon. Watch, watch. You seen any strangers around here? Well, what's the matter with you, Sheriff? What's wrong? It's more Harvey. Some ornery sneaking critter went to her place last night and stole all the dust that she'd saved and cleared out. I'm rounding up every stranger I can find. Leaping leapfrogs. My Harvey robbed. Have you any clue, Sheriff? Huh? Gee, you're a stranger here, ain't you? Who? Hey, who are you? Me? Yeah, I said you. Come on, speak up. What's your handle? Where'd you come from? What are you doing here? Well, uh... Hold on, hold on now. Watch him, you fellas. I'm going to have a look at this handbill, and I don't want him to get away. Yeah, but shut, shut up. up. I'll do the talking here. Let me see. Weight about 180. Yep, that'd be your weight, all right. Light toe-colored hair. Uh-huh, just like yours. Solid build, blue eyes, clean-shaven. By thunder, that fits you to a T. What wanted notice is that? This here's a description of Whitey Conklin. And this fella here is him. Me? Well, you're crazy. I ain't Whitey Conklin. My name's Jim Thornton. <laughs> Don't doubt it. Whitey's got a parcel of names. Eh, what's all this stuff? Was you buying it? What if I was? Got cash to spend, huh? Where was you last night? Riding down from the hills. Uh, a likely yarn. Now, I suppose you're going to say you was all alone, and I'll have to take your word for it. I was alone, but that don't mean I'm lying. Sheriff, are you sure this is Whitey? Can't be no doubt of it. Why, the crook, coming in here and giving me that yarn about buying stuff for his sister. You fellas got me wrong. I ain't... Where are you from? Wabash County, but... Wabash County? That clinches it. Uh, another one of them crooks that Sheriff Stevens let run loose from there. Well, you crooks can't come to my county and get away with thieving. Come on with me. We're going to Ma Harvey's house right now, and she can have a look at you. The Lone Ranger rode no farther than the edge of town, where he headed Silver down a shallow arroyo toward the waiting figure of Tonto. You ride past. What matter? Tonto, I want you to go to town at once. Ah. 
Here, Scout. There's been a robbery in town. I got out because the sheriff's suspicious of all strangers. You won't be suspected, though. Uh Uh-huh. A woman called Ma Harvey had gold stolen from her last night. While I was in the general store, the sheriff picked up a young fellow and claimed he was Whitey Conklin. If I'm any judge of character, the sheriff made a mistake. And what me do? They were leaving for Mrs. Harvey's when I rode away. Get there as soon as you can. Learn what happens to the young fellow the sheriff took with him. His name is Buck Thornton. And see for yourself whether or not you think I'm a crook. I'm going to do it. Then meet me at camp. I won't be here because it's too open. And I want to get rid of this disguise and put on my mask. Ah. Now hurry, Kimasabi, and report to me as soon as you can. It not take Tonto long. Get him up, Scout! Remember, I'll meet you at camp. Come on, Silver. Sheriff Pearson marched Jim into Ma Harvey's tiny living room. A crowd of townspeople followed them and... Oh, how are you feeling now? Oh, tolerable, just tolerable, Sheriff. I was doggone near scared to death. Reckon it would have been, too, if I weren't such a tough old buzzard. <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you something, Ma, and I want you to be real careful the way you answer it. Oh, land sakes, what is it, Sheriff? Take a good squint at this here toe-headed fella. Ever seen him before? Oh, can't say as I did. Can't say as I didn't. Ma'am, I never... No, go and keep your trap shut. Why'd you ask me? Because he's the feller I'm putting under arrest for breaking in here last night and stealing from you. Oh, my, sure, if you do get results fast. That's my aim. It weren't me. You can't keep me from denying what ain't so. You can't just jail me without giving me a chance to defend myself. You can do that in court. Ma, I do wish you could identify him. It sure would help a lot. Well, he's the same size. More or less, from what I can see. And he's wearing the same kind of hat, wide brim with a flat crown. Most everybody around here wears this kind of hat. That don't prove you're innocent. Well, gee, Shut you... up! Ma, how much gold was it you said was stolen? All a $2,000 worth. $2, and you kept it in a leather poke? Oh, no. It was always in an old salt bag of hay. There, you see. If you don't shut up, I'll gag you. Here, Ma, take a look at this poke. That about the amount of dust you had? Oh, sure is, Sheriff. But like I said, mine was in a salt bag. Nothing to keep him from putting the dust in this poke and throwing the bag away, is there? Fact is, he'd be bound to do that. He'd know doggone well that other bag would be identified. That sounds sensible. Wait a second. You shut Look, up. Mrs. Harvey, you wouldn't want a fella that was innocent to be jailed, would you? Why, of course not, young fella. And he won't be. The fella that was here last night, didn't he say nothing? Didn't he speak so as you could hear him? Yep. Well, then you ought to know his voice weren't the same as mine. I wouldn't be able to say about that. You you wouldn't? No. You see, he just spoke in a kind of real hoarse whisper. It was his natural way of talking at all, you could tell that. So whether your voice is the same as his or not, I'd never be able to say. Oh, golly. And his face was covered with a bandana, so I wouldn't know about that either. That proves it. This fella's got a bandana. And so have you, Sheriff, and so is nearly any other fella you can name. It's a frame-up. You crook. Ain't nobody ever accused me of framing them since I held office. Well, then get in touch with my folks. They'll tell you who I am. Of course they would. And how would that go to prove that you wasn't all so Whitey Conklin? You're going to jail. Well, there ain't no use arguing with you. Sure ain't. Here, Ma. What? Oh, the poke. It's your dust, no question about it. Now put it somewhere where it won't be found next time some crook from Wabash County hits town. All my savings back already. Mr. Pearson, I always did say you was the best sheriff in the territory. Just think of getting action so quick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and after court sets, this feller's going to get some real quick action at the end of a rope. Now get moving, Whitey. We're heading for the jailhouse. Don't call me Whitey. Whitey, Jim, Buck. It's all one the same. Get moving. I'm going. One side, folks. One side. Make room for the law and a crook. That means you too, Injun. What are you cluttering up the place for? No. Time to go now. All right, Whitey. That's the way to the jailhouse, you warm. Uh, now slip right Get down. him up, Scout. Get him up. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Continue our story. With Jim Thornton on his way to the jail in the custody of Sheriff Pearson, Tonto raced out of town and headed his great paint horse toward the camp where the Lone Ranger was waiting. When he reached it, oh, oh, Scott, oh, brother, oh. What did you find out, Tonto? Ah, uh, him, him, not Whitey. I didn't think so, but can you be sure? Ah, oh, Whitey got small scar on the chin. Fuller in town, not got it. That's strange. Why didn't the sheriff notice that? The sheriff not know about scar. It not on reward notice. No? Then you must have seen Whitey at one time or oh, another. Tonto not see him. Fuller tell Tonto. You're positive? He told you the truth? Ah. Tonto here. Whitey near here. I heard that too. We weren't able to trace him, though. Might have been a false report. Ah. Uh-huh. Tonto, I'm going to make a trip. And where you go? The county seat of Wabash County is Fremont. That's about a three-day round trip with hard riding. You ride heap fast to bacon three days. The silver can do it, though. Ah. Uh-huh. And why you go there? I have several reasons, Tonto. For one, we still can't be positive that Buck Thornton isn't Whitey, even though neither of us believes he is. As far as the scar is concerned, the man who told you of it might have been mistaken. Or it could have been disguised. Uh-huh. Sheriff Stevens could settle that point. For another, if Buck isn't Whitey, but Whitey stole the gold, he'd be likely to head for Wabash County. That's where he was raised and where he hangs out. I could warn Stevens to watch out for him. Not right. Moreover, I happen to know that Whitey is wanted for murder in Wabash County. While here, he's wanted only for theft. If Buck and Whitey are one and the same, Buck should be taken there for punishment. Me not think Buck same as Whitey. Nor do I, but I'm certainly going to find out. There's just one thing worries me. What that? Buck's trial will be held the day after tomorrow. If he gets a jail sentence, the townsmen may think they should take the law into their own hands to punish Whitey Conklin. Ah. The same thing might happen if he was released, unless evidence was shown at the trial proving Buck couldn't have committed the crime. Maybe Tonto take hand. Well, that's what I was going to suggest. If an effort is made to start a lynching party before I return, do everything you can to delay it. Ah, Tonto do it. And in the meantime, I'll return just as soon as I possibly can. Here, Silver. You hurry. I'll have to. (laughs) Tonto, let's hope this trip does something to solve this problem. Ah. Come on, Silver. Jim Thornton's trial was held two days later. There was no real evidence against him, but in that time and in that district, evidence was not always needed for a conviction. He was sentenced to 15 years in the state penitentiary, and yet the men who gathered in the cafe afterwards felt the penalty was too light. Just think of it, fellas. Only 15 years, and him stealing an old lady's savings. Not only stealing her savings, but half scaring her to death. Yeah, why should a fellow like Whitey Conklin get off with just a jail sentence? Well, we hang horse thieves. Hanging's what he needs. I'm for it. Uh, so am I. Yeah, I, I see it is. What's to prevent him from being hung? Uh, the sheriff's watching things pretty careful. You know how he feels about lynchings. But it'll be a week before the varmint's took from the jailhouse here and sent to the penitentiary, won't it? Yeah, about that. And the sheriff's going to quit watching us so close if we sort of lay low for a day or so, ain't he? That's right, that's right. Then why don't we lay low? And when it ain't expected, bust the jail in, drag the polecat out, and give him a rope necktie. Yeah, I'm for it. That's a doggone good idea. And what do the rest of you fellas say? Sure, All right, fellas, keep it in mind. Just as soon as the sheriff gets careless, we act, savvy? Yes. All right, fellas. <laughs> That night and the following day, an undercurrent of lynch talk ran through the town. It rapidly gained popular support, though the sheriff had no idea of what was being planned. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger had ridden to Fremont and back. And as he reined up in the camp outside Prospect... I'm plenty glad you get back. (laughs) Why, Tyler? Is there trouble? Tyler's in town, plan lynching. Which was just as I feared. Ah, you stop them? Tyler, we'll do nothing until they break Buck loose from the jail. Then we'll go into action. Ah. And Tonto, I've got news for you. Great news. The masked man allowed Silver to rest while he told Tonto the news he had brought with him from Fremont. Then the two men mounted and rode swiftly into town. It was dark when they arrived there. They took cover close to the jail and were watching when a small band of determined men broke inside. 
overpowered the jailer and carried Buck Thornton out. Buck was forced to mount a horse, and the group, joined by others, raced out of town. Let me go! You're lynching the wrong fella. Can't you give me a chance? Let me go. Let me go, I tell you. All oh, oh, you want are you coyote. It won't do you no good. Wait, please. We ain't waiting and we ain't aiming to please you. You see them trees up ahead? Yeah. Well, there's one of that bus that's just made for what we got in mind. It's got a good stout limb just the right height from the ground. And you can swing from it as hard as you want to without breaking it. No, no. Oh, I know you's a baggage. Your number's up, mister. Hanging a whitey conklin will be the best thing that ever happened to this territory. The will fix it. He'll teach a lesson for this. Maybe, but it'll be too late to do you any good. There are the three boys. Make him pull up right under it. Here we are. Oh, 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 oh. Please, I never done nothing you should be doing this to me. <laughs> Wait, what uh, the critter saying? Too bad he never thought what uh, happened to him when he was stealing that gold. No, please. Hand me can... that rope. There you are, and there's a sliding noose already fixed on it. Come on, Silver. Who's this coming? A white horse. The fellow's masked. Oh, pay no attention to him. Out of my way. Uh, the rope. He shot the rope. To stop him. Grab him. Come on, Buck. We're on our way. Get up. Get up there. Come on, Silver. Come on. Shoot him. Shoot him. That's too dark to aim good. Look at them horses travel. Let, let's take after him. Wait, wait, wait. You fellas. The sheriff. Whoa, 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 whoa. You addle-headed idiots. You mangy fools. Trying to lynch party in my county. What did I tell you fellas about a stunt like that? I told you what had happened to you, didn't I? I'll see every one of you jailed. But the varmint had an inch in common, Sheriff. Then where's he at now? You broke him from jail and let him get loose. I'd like to knock your fool heads together. Well, we never figured this would happen, Sheriff. Because you ain't got the brains to figure. Now let me tell you something. I don't care what business you got to take care of or what. First thing in the morning, you're making up a posse and help me trail them fellas. If you don't, you'll go to jail. This is all your fault, and you're going to fix it up again. Well, the trail is likely to be sort of cold by morning, ain't it, Sheriff? Can't be helped none. The colder the trail is, the longer you're going to be hunting them. Well, Sheriff... Don't try to argue with me. I just wish we could trail them fellas tonight. If we could, I'd make you fellas start right out. Oh, me. Me trail them. Uh, what's that, Injun? A Tonto trail, easy. Me follow fellow, you follow Tonto. Doggone, do you mean that, Redskin? Can you really follow a trail at night? Ah, uh, Tonto do it. Then we won't wait. Injun, where's your horse? Uh, yes, Count. You hear that, man? We're setting out on the trail tonight. Oh. And it just serves you right. Lead the way, Injun. Uh, get him up, Scout. Lead up there. <laughs> The angry sheriff gave his posse no rest, and all that night followed Tonto. They stopped to water their horses in the morning, then pushed on again. At night, they made camp, but hit the trail at dawn. The Lone Ranger had guided Silver toward Wabash County. He had kept his pace suited to the posse, but once over the county line, he reined up. Steady, Silver. Steady there. What are we stopping here for, friend? We can't be more than a couple hours ahead of that posse. Uh, sheriff Pearson can do nothing here. This is Sheriff Stevens County. Oh, Sheriff Pearson won't give a hoot about that. Once he gets his hands on me, he'll take me back to jail and no question about it. I think you misunderstand him. Well, like fun, I do. He's a good sheriff, Buck, even though he's too inclined to jump to conclusions. And maybe so, but and I... And he won't act outside the law. You can depend on it. Anything he does will be done legally. You don't savvy, Mr. Mass Man. He grabbed me just to spite Sheriff Stevens, if for no other reason. Do you really believe that? Well, wouldn't he? You don't understand either one of those sheriffs. They're bitter rivals, yes. They call each other all kinds of names. They'll even put obstacles in each other's way, if it can be done without interfering with justice. What are you getting at? Simply the fact that underneath all that, those two men respect each other. Their rivalry wouldn't be so intense if that weren't so. Just the same, I'd feel a lot safer if we was to keep on going for Freeman. You are. Huh? I had no intention of keeping you here. I'm staying to wait for the posse. Well, then they'll grab you. I doubt it. Besides, if you hurry, you should get back here just about the same time they arrive. Get back here? Yes, with Sheriff Stevens. I think when you see him, you'll learn some things to surprise you. What things? Now, don't what ask I... me those questions. Ask him. Now, ride. Mister, I'm on my way. Get up. Get along there. The posse saw the masked man waiting for them in the distance and spurred their mounts forward. Their guns were drawn as they surrounded him. Hello, Tanner. Uh, me bring him. Put up your hands, stranger. You're caught. You can't get away. If he makes a move, we'll plug him, Sheriff. If I'd wanted to get away, I wouldn't have waited here for you. Don't try no smooth talk. And besides, Sheriff, you're out of your jurisdiction. Huh? Out of You my... left your county and entered Wabash County, 
Back of that creek you just forded. What's that got to do with it? You have no authority to make an arrest in this county. No, uh, he sure got his nerve. Show him, Sheriff. Uh, in a way, he's got the right of it, fellas. Sheriff, do you mean to say you're going to let him run a ranny on you when we're a dozen to his one? Wait. Look over there. What? Two horsemen. Leaping catfish. One of them's that maverick, Sheriff Stevens. Yes, and the other's Buck Thornton. Well, doggone if it ain't. Hurry, Buck. We're coming. I don't savvy this. You will. Oh, boy, whoa oh, there, whoa oh, there. Stevens, oh, boy. you old faker. I want Whitey Conklin there. He's my prisoner. I came all the way here to get him. Yes, the masked man said he'd bring you. He what? Yes, Sheriff Pearson, Stevens here will tell you this isn't Whitey. It is too. And then if it is, you old fossil, I've made an awful bad mistake. That wouldn't be the first one, you big bluff. Because I've already hung Whitey. No, then who... Casey doubts it, Stevens. Show him what we found on Whitey. Oh, sure, you old goat. Take a look at this. A, a salt sack. Just like the one Ma Harvey said she had. <laughs> And there's dust in it. Exactly $2,000 worth of dust. This is getting too thick for me. Sheriff Pearson, I had an idea you'd caught the wrong man. So I headed for Fremont to check up with Stevens here. Yeah? Whitey had robbed Mrs. Harvey, and he was making tracks for Wabash County. I found the trail of a man evidently in a big hurry. Caught up to him and discovered it was Whitey. I turned Whitey over to Sheriff Stevens. Yes, and he got real justice here. Not the make-believe kind you have in your county, Pearson. I'll overlook that for a second, Stevens, seeing as how maybe you got a little to go on. But, masked man, what I want to know is, why, if you knew so much, you didn't just tell me, instead of running away with Jim or Buck or whatever his name is. Would you have taken the word of a masked man? Mm, maybe not. But I'd have believed Stevens if you'd have brought him back with you. There wasn't time to wait for that. If I'd waited, Buck would have been lynched. Well, Stevens had no horse that could have traveled as fast as Silver. So what the masked man did, Pearson, was act on that fool stubbornness of yours and bring you trailing here right after him. Gosh, I ought to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I ain't. <laughs> uh, Buck tells me you took his gold and gave it to Mrs. Harvey. Only because I thought it belonged to her. Well, then if this gold is given to Buck, everybody will be square. Suits me. But one thing more, masked man. Come what? on, Silver. Now look at that. Heading away without waiting to be thanked or nothing. Why, that's just the same as they say the Lone Ranger does. Oh, Just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>